Well, good morning. This is uh, S700 session number three, WebEx. Steve Crockett and Gordon Ritchie. The units are um, in the drive GUI position, velocity, and acceleration. All right. The uh, the unit screen give you the option to um, select for the application what the uh, what the desired position units are going to be. And you can see we have many choices, anywhere from counts um, and uh, metrics, standard units, and even degrees. So we're going to work in counts. And for the velocity, we're going to work um, many choices there. We're going to work in RPM. And as acceleration, we're going to go with RPMs per second. And the number of counts for the positioning portion of this WebEx is going to be 10,000 counts will equal one motor rev. The scope setup, the oscilloscope, uh, the screen has a what would be the equivalent of a four channel scope. We have um, resolutions, we have fine, normal, and chorus. Almost always we use the normal. For the times per division, which we have eight divisions, on the grid, you can look across the bottom, we have eight divisions. Uh, we can go anywhere from one millisecond all the way up to 40 seconds per division. So that's a pretty lengthy time. To see more detail, we're going to go with 50 milliseconds per division on the recordings we're going to work with today. We may change that as need be. Uh, channels for the scopes, we have some standard default settings which can be set with the restore oscilloscope defaults. Choices are, these are ASCII parameters, and uh, the choices are easily selected, one, uh, channel one through channel four. Uh, we have auto scale ability, so it's very simple to run a record and see everything in the screen. The trigger settings, um, most of the time, the most reliable of the trigger settings is the, um, well, they're all reliable, but the most is the velocity command because that is generated from within the drive. And normally the trigger level is set to approximately 10% of the target velocity. And trigger position defines where within the grid you're going to start displaying the record. So if you selected to the left, the recording would start where the, um, draw a line here, the recording would start on the extreme left, right on the beginning of the grid. If you uh, want to see the very front edge of it, 25%, it'll start right on this line right here. Okay. The uh, trigger edge is positive or negative depending on the move it's going to be made. We'll start it with a positive. You do have the option of a single shot or an auto trigger mode. We use single shot. The recordings can be saved or uh, and to a file, it would be a CSV type file. And then they can also be uh, loaded from memory for, this can be used as a viewer for uh, files that may, uh, you may have saved off and want to go in and look at the details. Okay. Motion service is a very handy feature. It gives you the ability to create motion from within the oscilloscope. The choices are uh, depending on which op mode you're running at, you can record in all different op modes. Uh, you can command direct current, you can command speed, torque, you can command a reversing type command, which is, we would refer to that as a step command. Reversing position, reversing torque. Uh, we have motion tasking, also, you can start motion task from the screen. All right, we'll be working with reversing. 
and if you look to the left you'll see parameters. You can go into the parameter setting and for a reversing move it is a time based move. You would select what your velocity will be and how much time you want, you want the motion to remain at that first velocity. And the second velocity and again how much time you want the second velocity to remain. So this is a continuous run and it will run until you stop it. So you have to know what the mechanicals on the machine are if you're actually recording with the, the load coupled to the motor. You would have to know if you, you have free travel or if you have limited travel. And you would adjust your motion uh, accordingly. Okay. In the oscilloscope screen we also have all of the access to all of the tuning parameters. All of the velocity parameters are found here. The proportional gain, the integral, the filters. We also have the position loop gains and then we have the uh, feedback filters and feedback uh, observer feed forward. All right, the settings here is just for the display of the screen. It can be uh, changed and we have the ability to change the oscill oscilloscope sample rate from 4 kilohertz up to 16 kilohertz. And then lastly we have a recording uh, start button, stop, and then a refresh. And then to the left of here we have a command screen where you can enter commands, uh, ASCII commands, and you can get immediate uh, information straight from the terminal. Okay. All right, so we'll be using the scope in several situations today. This display right here in time, if I, uh, I'll, I'll open up a plot that I've recorded. Let's see if I have any showing. No, it looks like I don't have one, so I'll have to reserve that for our first recording. Okay. Pull this aside. Okay, velocity loop tuning for default settings. I've gone into the, the setup wizard for basic setup. Um, I'm sorry for, for the tuning. I'm going to simply go in. These are default settings. I'm going to go in and select um, medium performance. Let's see, I might as well go ahead and select stiff. I'll tell it finished. All right. I want to make a note here that in the upper left, upper right hand corner, you'll see the op mode is digital velocity. Now we're in the oscilloscope screen. Make sure the triggering is set to 10. For service motion, my speed is 100 RPM in the plus direction. So my trigger is going to be 10% uh, of that. I'll start the recording. My drive is enabled. You look to the lower bar here on the right. It does say I'm online. I am enabled. Everything's ready to run. I'll start the reversing command. It asks you if you want to proceed. You're about to cause motion. Give it a yes. All right. And immediately it goes out and grabs a quick record. My motor on my demo is continuing to, uh, to reverse. I will give it a stop. Okay, now within the screen we have the channels here are displayed. You can see the uh, green is, I'm sorry, the red is the velocity command. And I will uh, I'll give you a quick line here. The velocity command is right underneath this 
I'm not drawing it quite so well, but it's that is the path of the velocity command in red. And then the actual velocity is in green. And then you have your current for the start of the move, the I command, and then the I actual, which are overlapping right there. If you use your mouse pointer and you click into the field, uh, left click, it'll produce a vertical line. And now all of the recordings, what intersects that vertical line is displayed in the box as well as time. Now I can go with my left and right arrow and I can walk this line back and forth and we can quickly see here we should have zero command and zero velocity and my target command on my reversing move was 100 RPM as we see right here the target is 100 RPM for velocity and if I go to the peak of the overshoot it looks like I had 32.9 percent overshoot on the velocity move. Now this was with default settings and so the performance of it in some situations this may be acceptable in some situations this may be unacceptable. So by default gains we have a 30 percent overshoot and I will uh, capture one more record here. I'm going to start the movement on my motor on my demo and then I'm simply going to go in and capture one more record. There we go. Looks like we have even a little bit more overshoot on the second move, the second record. Yeah, it's up to uh, 50, over 50% 50 overshoot. It's so a very, uh, in my opinion, a very poor performing system is uh, displayed here with the fault and the load in which I have. Okay, I will bring things to a stop. All right. Okay, the gains that were set in the um, in the system uh, by defaults, you can see we have a proportional gain showing here. Um, a point zero zero six. The integrator was set to 15 milliseconds. Uh, feed forward or the PI plus as we call it was set to a one by default. Our default filters, the low pass filter was set to 160 hertz. The high pass filter was at 1000. And then there is a second low pass filter that was not set. And again, this is a, a picture of what the screenshot actually looked like with default settings. Okay, auto-tuning. The drive has the ability to set the velocity loop tuning automatically. It can run, uh, it can generate um, limited m movement or you select actually what movement you wish for it to make uh, in case your application is one direction only and you don't want reversing. Um, what I want to do with this uh, portion of the WebEx is show you the screen, show you the parameters, show you how the parameters are automatically set as the tuning is taking place. Um, the system has full control the GUI has full control of the auto-tuning and if you have concerns when moving loads around you have to take into consideration uh, the machine and the safety of the machine. Therefore, uh, e-stop buttons and uh, any additional uh, precautions need to be made to make it safe for the mechanical parts of the machine during an auto-tune. Okay, so let's go to the GUI and 
I will expand out the wizard to a complete setup so that we can see more of the, the choices such as a velocity loop and the gains that are set. Um, Auto-tuning. There is a help screen for auto-tuning. It is um, right here the button for help. Take a quick jump in. So auto-tuning, they have converted from uh, German to English, and it does cover in, in quite a bit of detail the auto-tuning. talks about the different loads that you may encounter when you're trying to auto-tune. It goes into a pretty, pretty fair levels of detail and what to expect. Okay, so we do have a, a functional help. Okay, the drive is enabled. I'm in digital velocity. The first thing that I'm going to do, um, I'll, I'll run through the three steps that uh, are recommended. We have a start current tuner, which is a very short one, very, very quick uh, sample of the motor. Uh, the inductance of the motor and this will set the uh, current loop if necessary. Okay, the motor made about an eighth of a rev, uh, an eighth of a rev, and stopped, and that's all that's required. Uh, we have an observer that we're going to tune. We'll select that. Should start. The motor is slightly oscillating back and forth about an eighth of a rev and comes to a stop. Okay. The amount of, for the velocity loop tune, tuner setting, you can select the time, the speed at which you want the system to operate at. You want the, to select a direction depending on the application. Uh, I'm going to use reversing mode you have options on negative and positive only. Uh, tuning increments are the individual samples each time the uh, system is going to be sampling the load by, by causing motion with the drive and the auto tuner. The tuning increments can uh, affect the step size for the movement which you may want to change with each application. The desired stiffness that's selected here directly affects the integrator and as the number gets smaller, the integrator gets smaller so the, the higher the level of response occurs with the smallest amount of time. I'll set it in the middle for this test. All right, we have um, a test step speed, and I'll give that a quick, a quick sample. Okay, it's just oscillating. It's about a quarter of a rev, and so if you had your load connected, you could physically see how much movement is going to take place during the auto tuning. Stop and disable brought my system to a stop. We'll have to re-enable here. All right. <coughs> now, before I start the velocity tuner, I wanted to explain the the tuner gives um, the tuner will start with a standard approach of setting all the gains to zero, and the first one it will be working with is the proportional gain. So if you uh, are watching the tune take place, you're going to see the optimum value for the proportional gain is going to be, um, it will be seeking the optimum gain. 
So the system will start, I'll get the uh, quarter rev step and it'll be oscillating back and forth and there is a progress bar right here. You will see the progress bar start working as it is setting the gain. All right, and then once it, it finds the optimum value for the settings with all zeros and the filters and inter integral, then it advances to the next parameter. And it will go in and let's say, for instance, it sets uh, one, of the, one of the filters or let's say it sets the, the bandwidth of the feedback. You will see this take place and it will change the other parameters as the progress bar is moving forward and it may revisit the proportional gain in order to optimize the new value for the proportional gain after filters or integrators have been selected. So there will be quite a bit of activity taking place and I will be quiet through, uh, through this. I'll only make a few comments um, but it will take just a little bit of time and uh, just keep your eyes on the parameters and we'll see how well a performance it, it comes up with after the auto-tune. Okay, so I'm going to start it running and we'll see what happens here. Okay, as you can see while that was running and here as well, um, the tones were changing as the gains were changing and the, uh, I kept the mouse pointer moving around to uh, the different parameters that were getting set. So let's see how well we did. Uh, first off, I want to go back into the oscilloscope. We still have the previous record showing from the default velocity loop tuning where we had about a 50 plus percent overshoot. And what we want to do is start the recording and then we want to come right back and start the motion. So it ought to be pretty quick here. Okay. As you can see in the screen, we have eliminated almost all of the uh, overshoot. Actually, we eliminated all the overshoot. If I click into the screen and come across, it looks like we are slightly under the target, but it is definitely uh, closer to critically dampened, we would call this. The current is uh, quite a bit uh, steeper here. We have uh, 0.6 amps command, actual 0.3 amps delivered. So the performance with auto-tuning will vary from application to application. Um, it is a lot, uh, a lot better than the default settings in this situation where I'm, my load is just a an inertia wheel stuck to the end of the motor and I would think for belted loads um, or geared loads, ball screws, each application um, will vary and uh, it is something that we recommend that you, you know you, you would tr you could try and you would want to uh, of course be, be careful with the uh, auto-tune and take extra precaution for safety while you're trying out the auto-tune on your own application. Okay, well that worked fa fairly well. Let's go back to PowerPoint. Okay, showing the differences between the gains. Um, previously the proportional gain, if I recall, was set to 0 .006 and now we're almost up to 0.2 with the proportional gain so that's a considerable increase in velocity loop bandwidth. Okay, The screenshot for the velocity loop auto-tuning is shown 
here, which shows approximately 3% overshoot. And previously we had uh, well in excess of 40. This one shows 40 some percent with default settings. So a pretty big difference, 3% versus 40%. Okay. Alright, the next thing we want to talk about uh, beyond the, uh, the tuning, we want to go with um, some position WebEx here. The, um, from the GUI, we want to expand and go into what uh, the position loop data screen right here so position loop data and again from the basic setup and units one more time units for position units uh, we're going to be using uh, counts and the number of counts is 10,000 counts equals one revolution of the motor okay and position data is the screen that will set up all of the limits and ranges for the parameters that you will use when you're building internal position motion tasks or indexes. Okay, the op mode needs to go to position motion task in the upper right hand corner and I can fill the motor shaft. It is, uh, you can definitely tell you have an additional loop closed around the velocity. Okay, for the axis type, um, we've got linear set. Uh, maximum following error. By default, this is typically set up for 2,600, uh, two, 262,144 counts, which would be about 26 revs of the motor. Uh, we set it up for 10,000 counts, so my maximum following error will be one rev of the motor shaft movement. In position window is 500 counts. The acceleration max is set to 10,000 RPMs per second. The velocity loop positive, maximum RPMs 1500, negative RPM maximum is 1500. So while we're building motion tasking, these are the limits for the indexing. Okay, it's a position data screen. Okay. We will be needing to uh, set up I.O. for the system when we want to start a motion task or we want to start a homing routine, which homing is required when you're doing positioning from within the drive. So we want to go to the um, digital I.O. Okay. All right, I've already set up the digital I.O. for, uh, for this portion of the WebEx. <coughs> Uh, fault resets are going to be found on input number one. Input number two, I'm selecting a start motion task. And we get, uh, it's going to be activated with an edge trigger. And so into input number two, we will be starting motion task number one. All right, input number three. I've selected as another start motion task number, edge triggered, and it will be starting when you put uh, the input number three is activated, we will be starting motion task number five. Okay. There are lots of selections for starting motion tasks. 
I'll just do a quick drop down and show you that there are numerous ways you can start task. This one says edge triggered. Uh, we have a start motion task that is level triggered. Um, there, there is binary read motion task where you can set it up to have um, motion task create a binary number that will be started by a separate input. So many choices for starting motion task. Uh, input number four, we're going to need to start a homing routine. And so I've selected number 29, start motion task slash homing. Okay, so these are already in there and set and saved to the drive. Saved to EEPROM. Okay. Because homing is required. We will go to the homing screen next. Okay, from within the homing screen, we have uh, many different options for homing. Zero says set homing immediately, so for the applications, each one will be slightly different. Uh, this particular application, I've just got a, an inertia wheel on the end of the motor shaft, so I'm simply going to call up for set reference immediately. Uh, you do have options for home switch and zero pulse, uh, which is an, an, a marker pulse from created within the drive by the feedback of the motor. Uh, we have limit switches and zero pulse. We have home switches without. And as you can see, we have many, many others here. Mechanical stops um, can also be selected. You can drive the load into a hard stop and set a reference current. When it is reached, then you can set the, uh, the homing. Okay, so we're going to use set home reference immediately, which will negate all the rest of these parameters um, because wherever it's at, at the point it starts, it will set it. If I go to uh, the monitor screen, I'll show you the position counts. Actual position counts are 26,994. My input number four, when it is uh, when that input comes on, will force the position counter to zero. We have set the uh, position to zero counts and download the motion task to the drive. Pull the GUI back in, motion task. So from within the screen of motion task, you create the, the indexes that you want to store and save in the drive. And if you wish to uh, create one, you would go to, as the pop-up box says, double click in the number of the box, up pops the screen for filling in the information. For this motion task, I have selected a relative in position type task. Uh, my distance I want the system to uh, index is one revolution. The acceleration rate is 5,000 RPMs per second. My move will be, velocity command move will be 100 RPM and the deceleration 5,000 RPMs per second. I have elected to link 
this one index, one revolution index, back to itself. So I'm going to link motion task number one back to motion task number one. The start condition will be time, and I've got 500 milliseconds of delay in between each move. Okay, and this being applied, okay. The only thing remaining is to save the motion task to the drive. Okay. The task is shown here on this one line for ta motion task number one. It breaks it down into the segments. And now to start the motion task, motion task number is number one. I will go to uh, the monitor screen. And I know my digital I.O. was set up so that input number two would start motion task number one. And if you look to the position right here, the counts, what we're going to do is we're going to increment up 10,000 counts, wait for 500 milliseconds, and then it will continue to increase one more revolution, 10,000 counts, and it will continue on, always linking back to motion task number one. So here comes input. Now we're making a one rev move fairly slow and we're waiting for a half second, so I'm going to increase the amount of time one second per division, which should be eight full seconds. We should see at least one or two moves. And I'll start the recording. Still plus moves. One, one revolution of the motor, our axel, D cell, um, is shown here, and we are repeating the same command because it's linking. There's a dwell time in between each move of approximately a half of a second. It should be an exact half of a second. All right, so we are showing uh, motion tasking and the linking of the relative move. Back to motion tasking. Now we're going to do an absolute move, and from the motion task screen, I'll stop the motion that's occurring, and I'm going to go into motion task number five. All right, the type of move here is an absolute move. Our target is 30,000 counts for the absolute move, which would be three revolutions of the motor. The speed and acceleration remain the same. I am linking this motion task to the very next one, which is motion task number six. Its link is based on time, and we've got a half a second delay in between the move. I'll give them the apply, and we'll go take a look at what motion task number six looks like. So motion task number five says the target position is 30,000 counts. If I go to motion task number six, it wants to make a move back to zero position. It is an absolute tight move. Velocity and acceleration are the same. Then I elect to have a motion task next to be number five. So I'm going to link it back to my number five task, which is 30,000 counts out. My time is my start condition, and it's going to be 500 milliseconds. Give it an OK. All right, so I have two additional absolute moves, motion task, and I want to save the motion task to the drive. And once that's finished, so we are Starting a motion task that's going to make three revolutions, go to 30,000 counts, and then dwell for a half a second and then return. Um, so what I want to do, I'll shrink the amount of record time here to 500 milliseconds per division. Uh, the moves basically are the same, so we should have approximately half of the number of moves seen in this screen. 
and I'll start the recording. We will see a positive and a negative move because it's returning. The second task is returning to zero. So for the recording here, we see that the move is going up to 100 RPM. And there is a dwell between the two moves, and that's three revolutions worth of movement. And the dwell is approximately, it's right at, actually it's exact, uh, 500 milliseconds. I'll change my time one more time. We'll get, a, we'll get one more recording of this. Forgot the move was three times as long, so we should see, uh, we should see a full positive and negative move here. Okay, so what we're looking at here now, we've got uh, two full moves. It's showing the uh, plus portion of the move, three revolutions, and then the dwell, and it's linking to motion task number six. So there's the half second dwell, and then the negative move back to zero position. So that was the absolute move linking task number five to number six. Um, and let's see. That is the end of session number three.